ASP.NET Web Forms Web Server Control Validation. This video lecture will introduce you to utilizing validation server controls to require form fields and specific input with the ability to display error messages to your user. In web application development, when a user's interaction with a page requires the user to input data, there are a number of ways to validate data. We can use JavaScript to perform validation client-side, or we can validate server-side and return errors. With ASP.NET validation server controls, we have the ability to do both types of validation allowing us to create a validation barrier that both ensures we are getting the data we asked for, as well as providing a good user experience. Server-side validation. If we were to only validate server-side, then the user fills out the form and doesn't find out they made a mistake until a round trip to the server and back occurs. This can be frustrating for users, especially if that round trip takes time. However, if we don't validate the input server side, if something happened client side, like say a user disables JavaScript or manipulates the HTML or JavaScript in their internet browser tools, then we risk getting incorrect data or providing a, a confusing user experience. Client-side validation. Client-side validation is great for providing instant or near instant feedback to the user, telling them that they missed a form field or didn't provide the correct data. It's much less frustrating for the user and provides a great first line of defense for ensuring the correct data. However, like I said before, if we use only client-side validation, we risk getting invalid data. With ASP.NET validation server controls, we get both validation types in one. One advantage is that you do not need to maintain separate JavaScript code for your validation on the client side. Also, you have insurance that both your server-side and client-side validation are performing the same validation. If you need to change validation on a field, you only need to do it in one place. Let's take a look at what validation controls look like. So here I have a validation example page. In this page, I have several fields. I have I'm asking the user for a full name, a nickname, age, email address, price, and I have a submit button down here. So let's scroll back up to the top and look at these validation controls. So the full name is required. I require this field in my form. So I have a required field validator control. This validator control allows you to specify a control to validate, which in this case, txt full name matches up with the ID txt full name on the text box. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see there's also a validation group. Additionally, there also is an error message. Full name is required. And also I have display equals dynamic on here, which prevents the control from reserving space for the error message. If you put display equals static, what will happen is you will get a space on your page um, for the error message. So it's the difference between basically a CSS visibility where when you set something to not be visible, it still maintains the height or the area of that content on the page and the difference between display none and display block. 
So that is a required field validator. That says that if I submit this form and there is nothing in this box, display my error. So we'll see that message display if I don't type anything in the full name box. Nickname is not required. Nickname doesn't have any sort of validation on it because it's optional. Now we get down to age and you can see that I have two validation controls tied to my age text box. I've got a required field validator, which we just looked at how that works. And I also have a range validator. In my range validator, once again, I am defining control to validate is txth. I am also defining the validation group. Now validation groups are very important to get in the habit of using. I use them no matter what. However, if you don't have more than one validation, one form on your page or form group, let's say I have a form uh, that users fill out if they're new and I have form, a form that users fill out if they're an existing user in my site. So I have two different forms. Now, if I didn't define a validation group, what would happen is it would try to validate both forms at the same time, even if one of the forms is hidden. So if you put two different names, validation groups, you can specify the validation group additionally on the button that is going to validate this on the submit. So important to get in the habit of using, preventing crazy errors down the road and troubleshooting. So on this, remember this is a range validator. I have specified a data type of integer. I have put a minimum value and a maximum value between four and 120. So I am validating that the user is putting in an age between four and 120. If it is not between those ages, it is not valid. And the error message is, I find it hard to believe that is your age. Please enter your real age. Once again, display dynamic so that it will only take up the space on the page if the error message is showing. So another type of validator is a compare validator. I am using this compare validator to validate that the user is putting a decimal in this text box field for name of price in USD. If they don't put a decimal in the field, they will get an error. I am specifying in my compare validator that I'm doing a data type check for currency. Now, how handy is that? I don't have to make a round trip to the server or write some special JavaScript to make sure that they are putting a decimal in the box. I test that right here. And once again, we have an error message. Please enter a valid price. So let's take a look at what happens client side. Now I'm going to click this button on my validation example without putting anything in the form. You can see all of this displayed. And just to make sure that you believe me that we aren't doing a round trip to the server, I'm going to open up my developer tools in my browser. So as you can see, I just did a get and every time I make a round trip to the server, I can see it in the network tab. I'm going to hit submit and you'll notice that we did not make a round trip to the server. This is all client side code being generated from these controls. Now, if uh, you'll remember on age, I required an age between four and 120. So if somebody comes in here and they just decide to actually let's put this in here they decide to try to put some silly age in here I will get the other message I find it hard to believe that is your age please enter your real age um, also name a price in USD I can put 
a string in here and it'll say please enter a valid price until I actually put in a valid price. So let's say that the client side validation fails. Now I'm going to make it fail here in a minute, but let's first go look at the, the code for this page. I'm going to zoom in. So with the validation controls, I can use page.isValid. Now what this will do is run through the validators for the page. Without this check, if the user disables JavaScript, there is no guarantee that the page is valid. So if you have some application logic here that is relying on the user inputting correct data in there, let's say the decimal, and JavaScript is disabled or they actually go and somebody is doing something nefarious and modifies the code, um, the HTML of the page through their developer tools and their browser, um, they can actually get through to whatever methods you're calling in here without valid data. So do not completely rely on the client side validation. You also need to do a check server side. So if page is valid is a very quick way to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to bypass this, uh, this validation logic on here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to my developer tools. I'm going to hit settings and I'm going to disable JavaScript. Now, now that my JavaScript is disabled, watch the network. This time we will make a round trip to the server because I will bypass the client side validation. And as you can see, I have this validation summary control up here that's firing out the errors, the same errors that we get down here at the top of the page. Please fix the following errors. So val, sort, val summary form, if you scroll to the top of my page where that is at, is right here please fix the errors. Um, this by default, I've got it set to uh, visibility uh, false, so visible false. So what I do is if the page is not valid, I'm setting it to visible. Now, if they come back and they actually, let's say I actually do put valid data in this page. see that the page is valid. This video lecture introduced you to utilizing validation server controls to require form fields and specific input with the ability to display error messages to your user. Thank you for listening.